Hi guys, and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now, a few videos back, we took a look at the RT950 from Radtel, and while it turned out to be a fairly decent radio, it lacked some features which have been now implemented in the RT950 Pro. Now, as this radio is almost the same as the 950 base model, in this video, we'll concentrate more on the features that have been added to the Pro version. Now, incidentally, down the left side of the radio, there's four buttons and the screen shows three VFOs. Now, the top two buttons are PTT buttons for VFO A and VFO B. But what I also notice is that the PF1 button, which should be user programmable, is actually a PTT for the third VFO, that's VFO C. And it didn't appear to change when you tried to change it in software. However, in the main menu, there is actually no option to change PF1. Now the VFO C is actually where it's stated to be able to transmit on 27 MHz, which of course is the 11 meter band. Previous radios that we've tested that can transmit on 11 meters did not do very well at all, mainly down to spurious emissions and low power output. But later in this video, we'll test this as well. And well, you might be well surprised. In this Pro version, shortwave reception is available as before, but now with SSB support. So you can listen in on hams from around the world talking about the hobby using their hobby. There's no separate shortwave or HF receive antenna connection on this radio. It's all performed through the same single SMA socket. In fact, when you change bands, you can actually hear relays clicking inside, which is actually kind of a good thing. So there's not really much that's been added to the Pro version, but let's find out how well these new added features actually do work. So first up, let's test some HF reception. I'm going to use my outside wire antenna first, and that's because I know that it works quite well. Now, whether or not you think I should test with a small antenna attached to the radio is irrelevant because any decent receiver should be able to handle weak and strong stations on any antenna. Now when in the radio screen, you can use the star button on the bottom left to change the highlighted setting across the bottom. You can then either use the arrow buttons or the top rotary encoder to adjust that value. You can also press the OK button to show a menu specific to this radio receiver mode. You can change things like the LNA values, the BFO and the mode of modulation. Okay, so it works receiving HF using SSB. However, I personally do not think it does it very well when using a large antenna. As we've seen with another radio from a different manufacturer recently, it does appear to be overloading, even when turning the AGC off and turning the LNA setting all the way down. Now, while this does actually perform better than said hammered radio, you could specifically hear Morse code in parts of the band where it's not supposed to be and even some AM broadcast stations. And of course, those signals were not really there. It's just the radio was overloading and splattering its reception all over the place. Now, later in the video, I will go outside and use a telescopic antenna just to see how well that performs. Now, spoiler alert, it actually works very well. Now, I do quite like the menu on this radio with its colored icons and easy to navigate sub menus. You can pretty much program the radio from just within this menu system without the need for software. But if you like to use programming software like I do, 
then you can use the free programming tool from the Radtel website specifically for the RT950 Pro. The speed at which it reads and writes to the radio is also super fast compared to other radios that I've tested in the past. I guess chirp support will also be available by the time this video comes out. But you can actually also use a mobile application to program the radio as this radio supports Bluetooth. Bluetooth support is enabled within the menu, but I believe this is only for programming. No Bluetooth audio is supported, so no Bluetooth headset support with this model. Now this does also have GPS built in. We're not gonna test it, but the GPS can be used for the APRS feature. On a side note here, I would recommend that you download the latest firmware for this radio if you get one. At the time of making this video, there's already three firmware versions available to download from the Radtel website for this radio. Now updating the firmware is also super easy. Just download the firmware from the Radtel website, plug in your programming cable, turn the radio on, select the firmware file and radio's COM port, and then write the firmware to the radio. You don't even need to hold any special buttons down to put it into a firmware update mode. As one of the new features is the ability to transmit on 27 MHz, let's test the power output. Now, according to my new meter here, we're seeing around three and a half watts when transmitting on 27 MHz into a dummy load. On 29 MHz, which is the 10 meter band, it appears to output about two watts. Up on the two meter band at 145 MHz, it appears the RF output is a smidge under 10 watts, which is close to the specification. However, up on the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, we're seeing a drop in power here with the RT950 Pro outputting around six watts of RF power. So that's around four watts less than advertised. To keep consistent with other radio reviews that I've made, let's take a listen to the transmitted audio. And here I'll be using an SDR Play SDR with the SDR Uno application. Um, zero DQW testing the audio transmission from the Radtel RT950 Pro. This is on FM using the narrow setting. This is FM using a narrow setting on the RT950 Pro over. This is uh, M0 DQW testing the transmitted audio from the Radtel RT950 Pro. And this is using wide setting on that on FM. This is using the wide setting on FM. This is the Radtel RT950 Pro over. The test that I'm sure that most of you have been waiting for is the spurious emissions test. And while the specification stated this Pro version can transmit on 27 megahertz, Let's just see how clean it is. Now with my Tiny SA Ultra freshly calibrated and the radio transmitting at 435 megahertz on full power through a 40 dB attenuator, we're seeing an extremely good transmission here. Now once settled, there's no harmonics above the minus 70 dB noise floor. Now moving down to 145 megahertz, the two meter band, we're also seeing a rather clean output. Again, no visible harmonics above that minus 70 dB noise floor. And then the one that we've been waiting for, and that's the 27 megahertz band. And well, this is quite something. I think this is the first time I've actually seen a radio like this, specified to transmit on 27 megahertz, as well as 2 and 70, and be able to produce a clean output. Now I think Radtel has pretty much set the bar here with this, but wait, I'm not actually interested in 27 megahertz. 11 meters is something that I'd done when I was a kid. So now I'd be more interested to know what it's like on 10 meters at around 29 megahertz, of course, which is the FM portion of the 10 meter band. And boom, by the skin of its teeth on 29 megs, it's more than 40 dB down from that fundamental. So here we have a 10 meter, two meter and 70 centimeter transceiver all within spec. Well, apart from the claimed output power, but it's a start. Of course, it does transmit on the 1.25 meter band, PMR and probably GMRS2. So lastly then, let's head outside and see what it's like at receiving HF SSB using a telescopic antenna. Uh, 
it's, uh, it's nice to operate from the, from the house rather than uh, trudging all the way up to the shack. So the shack is where all of the, uh, the real stuff is, and uh, I've just got um, internet, cat 5, power, and all the rest of it. Sierra Papa 5, Hotel Romeo X-Ray. The station ending X-Ray, go ahead. It's Santiago. Papa 5, Hotel Radio X-Ray, repeat, Sugar Peter 5, Hotel Romeo X-Ray, okay? Sugar Papa 5, Hotel Romeo X-Ray, 5 and 7, 5 and 7 into North US, North of Scotland, over. Okay, okay, good morning from Poland, text for me, 57, you speak now, report 59, 5 and 9, 10 to 73, good luck, very good day. Thank you very much for the contact, have a good day, 73. So apart from not really being able to see the screen very well when you're outside in the sunlight, it actually sounded quite good. Reception was pretty darn good on 20 metres, and that's probably because of the type of antenna that I'm using. And 40 metres, it still received, but I would imagine it probably would work better if it was more of a resonant antenna for 40. It's just strange that when you connect it up to a N-fed half-wave antenna like I did yesterday evening that it kind of overloads and it's too much signal coming in to the radio. Maybe that's a sign that it is designed to use a telescopic antenna only which is a bit of a shame because I think that all receivers should work no matter what antenna you put on them. Anyway I'll let you decide what you think about that. Now I know what I think about this radio let me know what you think about it and if you think getting the pro version is worth the price. There's a few things here which don't kind of add up too much and I think it could be better in certain areas. But with Radtail putting filters in for 10 metres at least or 11 metres, I think that's a pretty darn good start. Until the next video, you guys take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next one.